Happy morning, I'm Paige. This is The Happy Kitchen, and today is different. We're gonna be talking all about coffee. You can probably already tell by my videos that I'm a little coffee obsessed. So today, I'm gonna be showing you how I use my Gravel products over here. I have the Bambino Plus, and I also have the Dose Control Pro Grinder. Um, we really love our coffee machines back here, so we're gonna show you how we use them. And I'm also going to go through how to clean the Bambino and also do a descale on the Bambino. I found that the instructions that come with it are a little vague and honestly a little bit misleading because I spent three hours on hold with Brevel. That's why I'm making this video so you don't have to also be on hold with them. And they walked me through how to do a cleaning, what to expect when a cleaning is happening, and also how to do a descale. Um, I'm also going to share with you our cost savings, so let's get started. The main reason why we got this specific Gravel espresso machine, the Bambino Plus, is because it is very simple to use and it's self-cleaning. We're not the most reliable cleaners, so we knew when we saw that this one was self-cleaning and the others weren't, that this was gonna be the one for us. And it has been extremely worth the money and I'm gonna show you how we use it, how to clean it, and how to descale it next. This is the Gravel Bambino Plus. You have your one shot, two shot, and your steam options here. This is your steam wand. It has a drip tray that comes out and has a little button to, that raises when you have too much water in there. On the back of the machine, it has a nice big water reservoir that we don't have to fill too often. And if you pop it out, Underneath, it has storage for your little tool that will clean your steam wand. So I like how in both of the machines, it has a hidden compartment for something small like this so you don't lose it. Bambino Plus comes with a porta filter, a two cup basket, a one cup basket, a piece for cleaning that fits into the one cup basket. And it also comes with a little cup for steaming milk. This is the Brevel Dose Control Pro. It has the adjustment here to go back and forth for the coarseness of the coffee grind so you can go more coarse and do like a percolator or a drip and then if you go finer that's for your espresso we have our set at 15 and then the difference between the regular and the pro is this piece here that allows you to set how long it's going to grind for so we have it set for five seconds and then when you click it it grinds this coarseness or fineness of coffee for how long you have set it for and then it turns off and that allows you to make small adjustments to get a nice espresso pour out of your espresso machine. This little guy comes with it and pops off or on. And then this piece also comes out so you can clean it. And then if you go on the inside, it comes with a little dose trimmer, I think is what they call it. And it helps to remove any of the coffee, uh, excess coffee so you get the right dose but we haven't found that this is beneficial and we don't even use it. I'm gonna walk you through how we make our coffee normally in the mornings. We always use the two cup basket in our portafilter because we make two shots at once. We never make one single shot at a time. You can see how it stops on its own. We have ours dialed in for five seconds at the 15 mark. 
My only complaint about this guy is he's a little messy and you can see quite a bit of coffee does go everywhere. So you'll see we've got this like this. What I like to do is tap all of that down and then I wipe away the excess on the edges. I forgot to mention the Bambino Plus also does come with a tamper and that's the next piece come in and I find that a pretty light amount of pressure is what has worked best for our coffee beans how fine we have them and how it runs through the machine so I push pretty lightly and I honestly push around the edges here and that helps me make sure that there's a flat um, surface of coffee all the way across and there's not one side that dips You can see it pretty even all the way across. Make sure there's no coffee on any of these edges, and that helps to make sure that it's a, there's a nice seal up on the espresso machine. Before we put this in and brew our coffee, I like to take a little cup, put it under here, and warm my machine up a little bit. So I run a shorter than one cup cycle. So I click my one cup and then I'll let it run for just a moment and I click it again to end. And what that does is it's gonna heat up my machine and this piece under here is gonna be nice and warm. I pull this off, then I place my coffee. Place my cup under here. I like to use the cup that I'm going to drink the coffee out of instead of brewing it in something and transferring it where you would lose a lot of your creme. If you brew it directly into the cup, you get to keep all of that. Um, you just have to keep in mind how tall the cup is. I've got my two cup portafilter all filled, so I'm going to use the two cup button. See that pulled a really nice shot. Got quite a bit of creme on top of there. For this two cup setting that I just ran, it is the factory setting. So it comes already set up with a single shot and a double shot for the timing wise. Ravel does give you the option to change those default settings. So if you wanted it to run longer or shorter, you can adjust that. However, with our Dose Control Pro, instead of adjusting our espresso machine, what we have done is adjust the length of time, so how much grinds, and then the fineness of it. So by adjusting here and on top, we have set it so that we've, we've experimented so that this guy then brews how we like it. And then I rinse this out right away and I make sure that pop them open and you want to get all of that rinsed out as well. It definitely makes a little bit of a mess on the countertop as far as coffee grounds, so definitely have to take the time and wipe your countertop once you're done, but I find that for making such a fancy espresso drink, it's worth it and it really doesn't take very long. Um, I don't really have to, you know, vigorously wash anything. I rinse everything out every time we use it and then once a week I give everything a really nice clean and the amount of time it takes me to make a coffee every morning is very minimal. I am going to show you guys how the steam wand works. They provide you with a cup that you are supposed to use. The reason why this one is very fancy is because it allows you to adjust your temperature here. So it's got three settings, low, medium, high. So you can click through high, low, medium. We like it at the medium heat 
most of the time. And then your foam down here as well, you can adjust your settings. So you can go with highest amount of foam, low foam, or a medium amount of foam. We usually do the medium as well. But it depends on the kind of milk that you're using. Today, I'm gonna use some oat milk to show you how the steam wand works. So there are two little lines here. You've got a minimum and a max. And I'll tell you from experience, you definitely wanna stick between these lines. If you do too little, it's going to overheat your milk and burn it. And if you do too much, it will overflow. So the other really fancy thing about this is because you get to adjust your temperature right here, it auto turns off for you. So you don't actually have to foam your milk. You can, if you would like to, you can pull this out and you can click this button and wait and have it out here. Do it until you want it and then turn it off, which is nice to have the option. Or this piece right here is a temperature sensor. And that's why they tell you that you are required to use this one when you're using it if you want it to auto turn off because it is reading the temperature on the bottom of this canister. So you're just gonna insert and then you're gonna make sure that it's far enough back so that the sensor is on the bottom of this. Alright, so you can see it auto turned off and then you're going to pull this out. You can see you've got really nice foamed milk. I used oat milk today and then you can see here we've got some of this. That is one of the things that you do want to make sure you clean right away, but be careful because it will be hot. But the sooner you clean that off, the better. Uh, milk tends to get very stuck on there. Now, the coolest part about this machine with self-cleaning is after you run this cycle and you put this back down, it auto-purges and it runs water through to clean out the steam wand immediately. So once this happens, all you have to do is rinse out the drip tray underneath see all the milky water that it cleaned out. We're gonna make one of these that I brewed a hot one and then I'll make the other one a cold iced Americano. Normally I brew if I'm gonna make one of these. I use it in a normal mug but just for today. What's most important is the taste, and it tastes amazing. And then this guy, I'll add some ice and some cold water, and we'll have an iced Americano, which is what we do most of the time. All right, now I'm gonna walk you through how you do a cleaning cycle. Our machine had been giving us a alert where all three buttons were flashing. We had incorrectly assumed and read online that this was the machine heating. It was actually the machine telling us to descale it. The machine had not given us an alert to clean the machine in quite some time, and we knew that it needed to be cleaned because it recommends cleaning every hundred brews. When I called the Brevel customer service rep, he stated that even though it wasn't giving us the alert to clean, you can clean it anyways, which is what I'm going to walk you through. However, once we completed the descale process, the machine then went to alert us that it needed to be cleaned. In the instruction manual, it says to put a large bowl underneath the portafilter when you're doing a cleaning cycle and that to make sure that your water reservoir is all the way filled. It gives the impression that water should be coming out of the portafilter and filling up a large bowl over here. He said that that is not the case. So you're gonna to wanna to take your one cup filter, pop that in, and then you're gonna take your little cleaning gasket guy, place him there. 
And then you're going to take a little cleaning tablet and put it right here. We purchased these online. I'm going to place a cup underneath it just in case, but we shouldn't need it. And then we're going to run one cup cycles at a time. And what's going to happen is it's going to push water through and that plastic piece is not going to allow any water to come through the portafilter. And instead it's going to backfill with some of the, um, some of the cleaning tablet and push it through and then it's going to empty out into your drip tray. And so what that's doing is it's cleaning everything backwards, essentially. So it's going to sound like it's pulling a shot, but nothing's gonna start coming out, and then it'll release, and everything will release into the drip tray. We're gonna do this three to four times. So you can see here, soapy water has come through and backfilled. And I actually have some water dripping back there right now. And when you take this out, it's going to look like this. And the customer service rep said that having residual a tablet in here like this is totally fine. We're gonna rinse all of this out. And then before I run any coffee through it, I'm gonna do a full two cup cycle and run hot water through. Make sure that all of the tablet gets pushed out. You can see there was a little bit of that cleaning solution left. I'm gonna do it one more time, just for good measure. Then we're gonna take a clean rag and wipe out where the portafilter goes. Now I'm going to walk you through a descale cycle on the Bambino Plus. The manual says to make sure that the machine is cooled off entirely, so my machine has not been on for a few hours now. I purchased some descaler on Amazon. This brand had a lot of good reviews because the Revell descaler was out of stock. I filled up my water reservoir to the descale mark, which is about half. To dump in our packet of descaler. Another thing to note is I use purified water in this reservoir only. I don't ever run our tap water through because it is hard water here in Arizona and that has a lot of extra minerals which means you would have to descale a lot more and it's not good for your machine. Just because some of that sank to the bottom, I'm gonna stir it up a little bit. My drip tray is empty. I'm going to place a large bowl under the steam wand and where the portafilter goes. With the machine off, you're going to hold down the one cup and the steam buttons for five seconds. And this is going to be our descale mode. And then we're going to click either or to begin the cycle. Mm -hmm. 
So the water back here has dropped to the minimum level. So we're going to dump this out. The drip tray is empty, so I'm gonna leave that. And then I'm going to refill my water reservoir to the max. To replace my bowl and then again we're going to press either or to resume the descale process In the manual, it says when the one cup and the steam buttons alternatively flash, the cycle is complete. I think that's probably a typo on their part because you could see the one cup and the steam buttons were alternatively flashing while the cycle was running. And now that it has stopped, these two are alternatively flashing instead. So my descale is complete. and we're back to running like normal. And this is how much water it had run through. So there is still some descaling solution in here. Rinse this out really well. It does not say to wash it with soapy water. I don't wanna get any soap on the inside of my machine. I'm gonna refill this up and run some clean water through. Alrighty, I'm gonna run a couple of two cup cycles. The water in the bowl looks pretty darn clear, so I think we're gonna call it. If the water wasn't clear, I would run it until it was clear. There you have it. Now my machine is cleaned and it is descaled. We love coffee and specifically we love espresso. So these machines have been worth it for us because we get to have amazing coffee every single day and it saves us some money. Uh, so we're not going through the drive-through multiple times a week because we were going through a drive-through multiple times a week. So this has saved us a lot of money even though the machines themselves are very expensive so i wanted to go through a little breakdown of the cost savings that we've experienced since we've gotten these machines we were averaging about 13 dollars per trip for two espresso drinks when we would go through the drive through we now get to enjoy espresso every single morning with our Revell machines so comparably if we were to go through a drive through every single morning at 13 dollars per trip that would be $91 per week, $364 per month, $4,368 per year. We are spending $10.99 per pound on coffee. We go through about a pound a week, so that's $10.99 a week, $43.96 per month, $527.52 per year. And if you add in the $500 price tag of the Bambino, that means we spend $1,000 $27.52 in the first year. That means $4,368 per year through a drive through for espresso every day, or $1,027.52 for the first year. That puts your savings at $3,340.48. Every year after that, since you're not having to repurchase your coffee machine, 
That brings your expenses down and your savings up to $3,840.48. We then purchased the Dose Control Pro after having the Bambino for a year for $240. That brings our savings down to $3,600.49 for the second year. And then every year after that, we're going to experience the savings of $3,840.48. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions for me, please leave them down in the comments below. I make gluten-free recipe videos every single Friday, and then every now and then I'm gonna be doing a review on a kitchen product just like I did today on here as well. So if you wanna see either of those, please consider subscribing. And then you can also check out my past videos. I have quite a few gluten-free recipes out there already. Thank you, have a happy day.